All right. Well, so here we are, um, starting up a, a bi-weekly thing. I don't know how often I'm going to be able to do this, but I just kind of want to keep down a record of uh, what I'm doing, what I'm hoping for, what I've been working on, what I've been checking out, all that. Um, but it's just generally a, a short kind of, well, I say short, it could be like 30 minutes every fucking time. It could be an hour and a half. It, it really depends. Um, but anyway, uh, kind of just want to create something semi-regularly. Um, I am working on projects, uh, hoping to get at least one of them out at some point. Um, but first, let me give some background. So for the last three months or so, I was generally unemployed. I say generally because I, I picked some things up uh, and they got dropped. So. It, shit was all over the place. It was weird. <laughs> I, I really don't know how to describe it. Um, but for a couple months there, it was pretty touch and go, Come to, uh, depending on my financial situation. Thankfully, I've gotten something uh, more permanent. It's a full-time position, doing pretty okay there. I'm not a big fan of the job, but just kind of realizing I gotta uh, suck it up, deal with what I've got, and in a couple of years, I'll be able to have an escape. So, eh, it is what it is. Everything will be all right. Um, but on that note, uh, I, it was a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think it was two weeks now. A buddy of mine who is studying at the uh, at a local university, he's he's doing pretty good, and he, he's kept in regular contact with me. Um, and he recently asked me to help him with the project he's doing for a class and uh, part of that was uh, sitting down and having a, a recorded discussion and interview uh, he said podcast like which I suppose that's true um, about uh, the link between Christianity and suicide and it was it was a fascinating conversation I, I genuinely enjoyed it um, Nick uh, Nick is his name it's right on the YouTube channel so I'm not divulging any information there uh nick he's a he's a clever cookie he really does think about things oftentimes uh and you can kind of see it in the podcast i really do like him he tends to be a bit of a quieter folk um doesn't really vocalize what he's saying all too often but that's not because he's a dullard it's absolutely because he is 100 percent pulling in uh, like all the information around it. he's he's one of those people that he sees he sees everything right he's not just kind of watching things he is absorbing it on a level that i do have a lot of respect for um so he, you don't hear him much within that interview and part of that is just i'm a talkative dude <laughs> you get me going on a topic it, it really is hard to get me to stop um at the same time like he's He's not not participating. Uh, the thing to understand there is, he, like, you can't see the the visual. I was watching him the whole time. Uh, we were sitting across uh, from each other uh, at a table. Like, he he was, like, taking notes. He was genuinely uh, searching things up as I was talking. Uh, um, there's actually a point in there where I said, like, the, the Council of Nices or something? And, like... Within moments, he he actually pulled it up, and you can hear the point where I said, "Oh, the Council of Nicaea." Yeah, yeah. Um, that that's just what he was doing the whole time. He he was genuinely like double checking everything I was saying, um, really trying to absorb it and then conceptualize it and vocalize it in a different way. Um, I I have a lot of respect for Nick. He's he really is a smart he's a smart cookie. He's gonna do well, and I do look forward to his future work. Um, which it's going to be interesting following that because um, if you don't know, uh, I am hoping for uh, hoping to push forward in a career in academia. Um, well, it's academia or law. Uh, it's not definitive, but the academia stuff is working out pretty well. I mean, one of the videos I have on this on this project is essentially uh, a conference talk I gave at a, an honors conference, which. Is supposedly uh, a big deal. I don't know. 
it, it really felt bum rushed during that whole conference. It was just sort of like, hey, submit a thing. And I was like, uh, okay. And I put it in and they were like, yay, you're accepted. And I go, what What does that even mean? Like, I don't even know what the, the level is for that. I don't know if it really is that prestigious, but whatever. Um, past that, I was able to do some conferences and such. Like, the academic side of things seems to be working out. And I am, I am actually getting genuinely excited for that because uh, I've had access to uh, better studying, better research tools, uh, like, Man, doing a lot of this on my own has been rough, <laughs> but uh, now it, now I'm establishing connections, which which is really good for somebody like me because there is a lot of material that I want to pour over that genuinely it just kind of like hits a roadblock. So, um, and on that note, I like school is starting soon, so uh, I believe yeah, it's the second to last semester I have. Uh, before I get my associate's degree, and then we'll see what happens beyond that. Currently, my plans are to transfer um, away from where I live uh, for, for a couple reasons. I mean, obviously, this last unemployment period uh, <laughs> did not did not do any favors for me when it came to really wanting to stay where I am, um, and then thinking that the, the other tough financial time that I had, which is when I lived out of my car, also happened at the same place and it happened for similar reasons like I'm, I'm just starting to realize that I don't mesh with the place I live uh, which is fine other people are like other people can survive here they're doing well here uh, there are genuinely good people here I'm just not one of those people who can sur uh, survive in this sort of environment um, which, you know fair <laughs> I, I tend to be an asshole on the best of days <laughs> so <laughs> So the fact I'm kind of in one of those places that really, really focuses on, on the public-facing uh, veneer more so than the actual person beneath. Like, that's my best way to describe the society I, I currently find myself in. Um, where I grew up was very much like if anybody kind of put it up, uh, put up a veneer, if they put up any sort of mask and just sort of tried to play a part, people would, were able to sniff that out immediately. That, that was just one of those things where it's like, oh, oh, you're a lying son of a bitch. Okay. <laughs> like, but now where I live, it, it's very much, you have to wear the mask. You, you have to like tell people you're something you're not. It, that's not only the norm, that's expected. If you don't do that, you're not a good citizen. And I, I just, I can't, I really can't. Um, but beyond that, um, so, School starting soon, uh, hoping to transfer out, um, probably towards the East Coast. I had considered transferring out to Europe. Um, the possibility is there. I mean, I'm a bit, like, okay, this isn't a brag. I'm a 4.0 student. I'm an honor student. Like, I've I've got opportunities, um, and that's not to brag. That's just saying when when you have those sorts of aspects on your transcript you have a lot that you can play around with um so we'll, we'll see how that goes uh, i've still got like eight months before i have to figure out what's going on there beyond that um i suppose the interesting thing that was happening this week um well this week and last week and or the week before that um has generally been the the react controversy I have been following that, and some of it has been genuinely, <laughs> oh boy, some of that has been quite entertaining. Um, but at the same time, there's a lot about that discussion that I sort of, I sit here in, in a weird camp, and part of that is I absolutely understand well, okay, so I'll say my position is generally yes. If you're going to react to something, um, then you have to be able to do enough work to make it transformative. Now, what that line is, I'm not an expert on. I won't be able to tell you. I'm not an expert on copyright or IP. Like, I'm, I'm just going to stay away from trying to figure out the, the legal definition. But for a lot of people, it seems to be more the philosophical or moral or ethical uh, line of what good react content is and when it comes to that um, 
Part of what makes the conversation interesting to me is that a lot of people are talking about uh, a interesting topic that absolutely some of the views on it are, are quite strong. On one hand, there's the idea that if you're not doing enough, you're just being a lazy bum. You're, you're essentially not doing any work to f steal off of the work of other people. And I absolutely understand that position, which is why I lean more towards that camp. But the other side seems to be generally divulging into this uh, broader idea that copyright law and IP law uh, overall is just kind of shit. And I do agree with that as well. Now, it's not enough to actually move over into, yeah, just react with, wow, cool, wicked. Like, if, if your reacts are not good enough, I, like, it's not a matter of copyright law at that point. It's just, dude, your entire job is entertaining people. And if that is your entire entertainment, you're not doing the entertaining, it's the content. Um, so, when it comes to uh, the whole idea that copyright, uh, one idea I've heard, copyright is outdated, it really needs to be changed. I agree. Now, what that change entails, how to do that, I, like, I don't have enough expertise in that field to be able to, uh, to tell, but, um, when it comes to the, the current paradigm of, like, streaming content and whatnot, especially exclusive streaming content on a lot of platforms, we do seem to be in a very, very weird position when it comes to uh, copyright and IP, and I, again, I'm not an expert on that, but it will be interesting to kind of delve into that. Uh, watching these conversations that have been happening, the, the two things I've realized is, one, I maybe need to do a bit of research into copyright itself, how it works, why it works, and um, just sort of get a, a better legal basis for understanding copyright overall, and not just have like the basic, oh, there's four tenets of fair use. That's, that's a good baseline, but it's not enough to really understand just how complex copyright is and why copyright, uh, copyright law is what it is today. Um, the second thing is that I've kind of realized when it comes to the fair use argument, especially when it comes to React, uh, React content, there is, not a, there is not enough data. There is kind of this problem that a lot of people are talking about something that doesn't have enough data to point in one direction or the other. And in fact, um, people will create sort of, oh, I created an experiment where um, such and such uh, did a react to my uh, thing and it showed this effect and it's like okay that's one data point um, and it's really not enough to uh, create a full conclusion we would have to have like better control we would have to uh, have better experimental data like there, there is a fundamental experiment that would be able to have uh, would be able to happen here but it would be interesting to figure out how do we even measure this kind of problem and that, that to me is the more interesting aspect. Absolutely, I'm gonna have to uh, research copyright law, but at the same time, um, this is one of those things where, God damn it, if, if, if I had the resources, man, I would absolutely try to figure out how are we going to experiment with this? Like, how would you even create that experiment? How do we determine the, the effect of react content from particular creators let's say a creator has x amount of subscribers or x amount of viewers on a regular basis and then they react to something how do we even measure the effect of that uh, we would have to be able to create control groups and uh, specifically you would create videos that you would not be reacted to you would create videos that would be reacted to uh, this sort of like this this is one of those things that would be genuinely interesting if you were trying to figure out the data for this and unfortunately i, I just don't have a team like i do have some social connections that would find it interesting but i don't i don't really have like a group of people that have the clout to be able to pull off uh studying something to that degree so that's an unfortunate reality I have to do with. But um, if I can encourage anybody, like genuinely, if you could figure out a way to study this sort of thing, like pull actual data, I think that would be the most valuable, that would be the most valuable aspect of this overall conversation is that I believe the, the moral or ethical or philosophical conversation 
I think everyone is in their camps at this point. I don't know about, I don't know much about being able to sway people on those particular positions. But if we were able to create a robust data set, I think that would do far more. That, that would do a significant amount into getting people to understand one side or the other, or, or really definitively coming up with some objective standard for understanding <coughs> this problem. Ugh. Other than that, um, I think, yeah, it was about two weeks ago I restarted on researching Russian, uh, specifically the, the Russian language. I'm trying to get back into that. Uh, that's actually part of my new semester, is that I've started, uh, I've signed up for a class of Russian. Honestly, I don't know how much I'm going to learn from the class. I don't know enough about the teacher. I don't know enough about their their teaching style. I don't know. I don't know what method they're going to be using. I'm assuming, um, given my last, given the last experience I had with the college language class, it it sounds like it's going to be very much the formal. Here's some grammar rules. Here's this. Here's that. Um, which is why I've like reamped on on learning Russian on my own. So part of that is part of that. Is, it, it's going to be interesting because um, I do. I do think it'll help, uh, it will help with my Russian, genuinely, because at this point, I, I think when it comes to learning words, I, like, there's a limit to that, especially with a language like Russian. Um, Russian is actually not hard to learn when it comes to reading, um, reading the letters itself, and it, it's not that hard in sort of learning general phrases and words, but if you're actually wanting to engage with the Russian language on any significant level, the biggest fucking barrier is always going to be grammar, because it, Russian grammar is so different from uh, the grammar that happens within Romance languages. So, uh, for example, I've, I've been studying Spanish, and I know enough Spanish to be able to speak with uh, customers at the place I work. I, I'm not having like deep, deep conversations with people, but I know enough to be able to uh, help somebody who doesn't know enough English to be able to check out at the place and ask the right questions and get into the details of like, oh, you're looking for this item, so on and so forth. It's good enough, um, but part of why it's good enough is, is specifically that Spanish is grammatically pretty similar to English. There are absolutely some differences when it comes to like, um, ob when it comes to subject verb object, uh, like the object part of that in Spanish is kind of interesting. I mean, lo uh, sé, lo sé. Like, the low part of that is kind of interesting. Uh, calmate. Um, the, like, te uh, in, in calmate is, is a completely different nomaker. It's, it's like specifying an object for a verb. That's usually not a thing that happens in English. So that part is a little iffy when it comes to my Spanish. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it, like... Um, for the most part, you can translate English to Spanish one-to-one. -one. Uh, when it comes to the grammar. <laughs> Russian is completely different on that aspect. So, actually going to uh, formal classes and really sitting down and learning the grammar, I think is going to be the the biggest thing for me, breaking through the barrier. And <clears throat> I'm really hoping for that because I, I have recently come across a, a decent, decent amount of material in Russian that has never been translated to English. And specifically, it's... There, there's like a whole group of Russian philosophers that um, wrote most of their material from like 1895 to 1910. That like whole 15 year gap, um, there is a decent amount of Russian writers at that point that had their material scrapped, that was pushed down, it was censored, all that, and there is currently a revival movement that is happening within Russia to bring some of those writers back. Um, given the, given all the, well, the post-USSR world, um, there is a decent push uh, to have them actually be studied. 
which I think is good. Um, but the problem there is um, that's all circulating within Russia. That isn't making its way back to the United States. And man, I wanna, I, I wanna get in on that. I gotta get in there. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of genuinely looking forward to that. Um, and hopefully some of the things I actually read, I can help translate, who knows, academic career and all that, like doing translation work, especially for a niche, uh, like that might be genuinely beneficial. Um, and it might get me some money, who knows? <laughs> <coughs> so beyond that, um, I also want to like touch upon something interesting, which is I, like, I want to actually explain what some of the point of this channel is. Uh, this whole YouTube project is essentially, as I'm going along in my academic career, I kind of want a place where I can explore all the stupid bullcrap that isn't going to fly well with academia. Um, the first things I, I really focused on were like Black Lagoon and Helsing, but Okay, I am I'm terrible at what I do. Uh, every time I, I tried to write something, it turned into uh, something horrendously overwordy, overproduced. Just yeah, I I really got to work on some things. So, um, what I'm doing with this sort of project, which is the the like bi-weekly check-in and just sort of like, hey, here's some interesting things. Part of that is is to try and ground myself. Um, the other part of that is I can keep an archive of, of, of what I'm working on, sort of the uh, overall progress. And f to that end, I have done some work recently for a different project. Um, I've only got about a minute, a minute of it written and edited, I've, I've kind of gone at this with a different perspective, which is instead of just writing the entire script and then trying to do the video stuff afterward, I'm trying to simultaneously do those. And it turns out that's actually, like, at least recently, that, that turns out to be a pretty good approach to it. Um, mostly because I, I don't get ahead of myself and then just start like writing paragraphs of tangents onto something and suddenly I have a project where I'm like I don't even know how to visualize this stuff it's it's simultaneously I'm trying to figure out like what am I writing how do I want to visualize it um, and then like I'll, I'll write part of a paragraph and then go wait 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 this would work with that and um, what if I put this together and, and try to like show it through this way and then I'll go to like my video editor and try to put together like a graphic and then um, once I have like a, an idea of what I want to visualize, then I can go back to the paragraph, maybe I'll fix it a little, and then uh, I'll try to uh, correct that, and then I'll get like two or three paragraphs out of that, and I go, great, okay, I have like a thing here, and um, I'll show a bit of that, uh, you know what, I'll show a bit of that right now. I once had a roommate who told me that a person's knowledge is best understood as two different layers, creating four categories. The first layer seems fairly obvious. There are facts and ideas that you know, and there are facts and knowledge you don't know. The second layer is a bit more obtuse, but I've often found it useful when I'm researching. That is, your awareness of what you actually know and don't know. In other words, you are either aware of your knowledge or you're unaware. As my roommate liked to put it, there are the things you know you know, and the things you know you don't know. Then there are the things you don't know you know, and there are the things you don't know you don't know. Those last two are pretty unintuitive, which makes sense. If you don't know whether you know something, then it seems almost impossible to contextualize whether it's a fact you know or not, right? Uh, thankfully, examining the knowledge of an individual is not just a solo act, like it can be for the first two. Instead, our awareness of our knowledge limits come from interacting with others. Let me give an example. At one point, I was telling a co-worker of mine about how I was listening to Dio's less known albums. He responded by saying that he never heard Dio, but he'd heard that they were enjoyable. I was taken aback, as I figured he'd absolutely know Dio, since he listened to classic rock stations. That moment was me discovering a fact I didn't know, and it was one I didn't know I didn't know. My assumption was that he would be familiar with the name, which turned out to be incorrect. Then I told him he probably knew Dio, 
but that he didn't know he knew Dio. I then played him a portion of Rainbow in the Dark, and he almost instantly said, oh, that band. That moment was him discovering a fact he knew, but didn't know he knew. He had heard Dio and was actually familiar with their music, but he didn't put together the name with the songs he knew. And that that process seems to be working out pretty okay. Now I'll I'll say it's, it looks like shit. It sounds like shit. I kind of get that, but at the same time, like I'm making progress on something, and hopefully, hopefully that can work out much better. Now I will say I do work full time, so. Well, I work full-time, and then next week, school starts, and I'm going to school full-time, so I really don't know how much time I'm going to have for working on these these side projects, which is another reason why I'm hoping to do more of these bi-weekly check-ins, just to like keep myself working on this and, and really remember, hey, this is a thing you want to do, and you want to keep going at it, right? Right. Exactly. So, um, I'm figuring out my schedule. Everything is going to be figured out soon enough. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully, who knows? A year from now, everything could be topsy-turvy. It could be hunky-dory. I don't know. But for right now, at the very least, I got a direction. I'm pointing at it and going to move forward. So, hopefully everything works out. And for you, I hope everything works out. You have a good one.